This video is a behind the scenes on how I created my climbing film. I'm gonna show you some cool stuff that happened when I was up on the mountain. And also we're gonna dig into the Nikon Z6 Filmmakers Kit. That is the camera and the setup that I used to film this entire project. Let's get after it. Okay, so as you can see, I am at home right now. Now I built a little blackout scene it's actually quite simple. I just have the Nikon Z6. I'm recording using the Ninja V monitor. I have a couple lights set up and I just have a flag behind me. And I built this set to basically create this black background. So two lights, one key, one hair light, and that's how I create this look. I'm using the Nikon with the 35 millimeter 1.8 to get that really shallow depth of field. And with the Ninja V, I can get 10 bit. So that footage looks fantastic. So I just got back from three days of climbing in Canada. Before we show you some more behind the scenes, what I wanted to do is just explain the gear that I'm using. So for this entire film and for this entire behind the scenes, I'm using the Nikon Z6 Filmmakers Kit. That is the only gear that I brought with me up to Canada. So this is the Nikon Z6 Filmmakers Kit. You got the Moza Air 2. You got the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus. This is one of my favorite mics. It's the one I've been using for a very long time. You get an arm so you can attach the Ninja V to the gimbal. You have your Ninja V, which I'm recording on right now. You got the Nikon Z6, obviously, and then you got the 24 to 70, which is the perfect kind of all around lens. And it's great just to have on your camera at all times. There's a lot of times during this climb where I would just keep the 24 to 70 on my camera because I knew I'd have a range of focal lengths and I was able to get some pretty awesome footage. Now for this climb specifically, I added on a few more pieces of gear. I have the Nikkor 50 millimeter 1.8, the 35 millimeter 1.8, which I'm shooting on right now and just a bunch of extra batteries. So for this behind the scenes and for my climbing video, I shot it entirely using the Nikon Z6. No other cameras were used when I was making these videos. And the reason for that is that I really want to show the power of the Nikon Z6. This camera is packed into a small body, which allows me to take it up on the mountain and get some of these shots that you can't get with bigger setups. Now, I also brought along the entire kit on some of the days on climbing and you'll see when we had more freedom and flexibility to be able to bring gear with us, I was able to pack the entire kit. But when it came to the summit day, when we're really stripping down our packs, I only brought the Nikon Z6 and I just handheld it. And I was still able to get some pretty excellent footage. Even though I was just running gunning with the camera, I had the 24 to 70 on most of the day. And I only brought the 50 millimeter to get some specific shots when I was up there. So very stripped down kit for that last day. What's up, guys? What's up, man? What up? How you doing? So this is day one. I just arrived into the Canadian Rockies. We're in a hotel room, obviously. This isn't on the side of a mountain, but I have a script of things that I want to shoot. I have kind of the story structure. I have it all written out. I have some voiceover, some moments that I want to capture. It's loose though, because a lot of things are going to be fluctuating once we actually get up to the mountain, because we've never been here. We have a guide service that obviously knows the mountain. We trust them. That's why we hired them so they can navigate us through the glacier. and give us the flexibility to be able to shoot the film, but I need to know what I'm shooting. So let's talk about my process for a minute. What I do is I outline first. So I work on my outline, I come up with the story, what I'm gonna do. Then from there, as I start working on and filling in the pieces, and I've created some voiceover work, done some things that I wanna capture on camera, but then from there, I now am breaking down my script and my talking bits and everything that I've kind of come up with my ideas into a shot list. When you have that plan, when you have shot by shot by shot, gives you a structure so you don't get out there and you're not like, how do I film this? You have to plan things. And so my focus right now is just working on planning, just coming up with the entire shot list. And then I'm gonna go over it with the guys tonight and then we'll meet up with the guides in the morning and go from there. My name is Dara, I'm a guide with Yam Nuska Mountain Adventures in Canmore, um, with these guys uh, showing them around the area. 
my name is Tak, uh, originally from Japan. Uh, today we are going to uh, Athabasca Glacier and uh, find a nice crevasse, you know, uh, try to ice climbing crevasse rescue stuff. Then tomorrow we're going to do a peak, which is just beyond these hills here. So we're going to do an 11,000er. Um, so big day, alpine start, 12 hour day, um, with lots of terrain and complex glacier travel to, uh, to cross. I'm so psyched climbing with you guys. Okay, so I just got lowered into a crevasse. I've got an ice screw that's basically holding me up right now. We're gonna do some ice climbing down here and I'm gonna film from below. Now let's talk about some of the issues that I encountered when I was up there filming. So when I'm on a mountain, their size and weight comes into play all the time. So usually I have a bunch of smaller cameras. And like I said earlier, I really focused on just bringing the Nikon Z6 and that's it. And one of the strengths of this camera is that it is a full frame camera, but it's so small. So it's not really adding that much extra weight than I typically bring on my climbs. Now, obviously the things that you encounter on mountains is freezing weather, you have wind, you have snow, you have a lot of water. It's frozen, but it does melt and get all over the camera. So I was working with gloves because it is extremely cold up there. And with the Nikon, I was able to set up the eye menu, which is on the back, there's a, this eye menu that you can set up and you can put all the things that you need accessible. You can also map out a bunch of buttons. There's a couple here on the front, there's a few on the top, on the back. And what I did was take the things that I needed to have access to when I was out shooting and map those out on the camera super accessible so I could hit it with my gloves and not have to worry about stripping my hands off to be able to change settings. So with the Nikon, I found it super easy to be able to get the shots and be able to switch between my slow motion and my real-time footage. I was shooting both at 4K and also slow motion, so I was shooting 120 frames per second. The majority of what I shot on was between those two frame rates. Now, one thing that I I found that I really like about this camera is that you also have 120 frames per second that's not a variable frame rate. So variable frame rate basically means that it's gonna auto create the slow motion for you. But what the Nikon has is a non-variable frame rate, 120 frames per second, which means that it's still capturing audio. So there are moments where I might want something slow motion, but I also wanna capture audio and might be able to use this for real-time footage. And so that's when I put it into that mode so that I was still capturing audio and I could use it as my real-time footage. We were supposed to be up at three this morning, headed for the summit, and uh, woke up at three, pouring down rain, completely got rained out. So we had to kind of switch our plans a little bit and uh, we decided to sleep in, let the rain subside, which was about six, seven o'clock. Yeah, today is gonna be another day where we'll do some filming and uh, go explore kind of the lower levels of the mountain and then tomorrow we're gonna go for the summit. So I brought this case along with me. This is just a simple little case that I have. It fits like one camera in here and it has a few clips on it. So what I did to make it accessible when I was on the mountain is either I'd have the 24 to 70 on, the 50 or the 35. I would just choose a lens for a period of time. And so when you're climbing, you basically will climb for a section. So maybe it's an hour or a little bit longer depending on how the conditions. And then you take a break, you get off your feet, you get some food, you get some water, you chill. It's a great time to do a lens swap. So we have like a perfect day for the climb. So we start at 4 a.m., climb through the night, and um, the sun is just peeking over the mountain now. But um, there's been glacier travel back and forth. And the next stop is the peak. So what I would do is I would have one of the lenses on the Nikon Z6. I would have the 2470, and that lens would just stay on for that period of time. Because this is so small, it just fits in one of these cases. Somewhat protected, it's not the most protected in the world, it's still pretty thin, but I can hang this off my climbing harness. And so I'd have a carabiner attached to this, and I'd have it roped up so it was just on my hip the entire time. What I was able to do is just unzip this, pull this out, pause for a second, grab some shots of the climbers up ahead of the conditions and where I'm at, be able to slip this back into this case and keep climbing. So I'm not having to pull off my backpack, I wasn't having to strip a bunch of stuff off, but I was able to have this camera accessible. And then when I'd stop for our breaks, I'd pull the camera out, I'd switch lenses, and go to another focal length. And that's how I was able to get a variety of shots. Now the reason that I really wanted to use the 50 and the 35 is that 1.8. So having a focal length of 1.8 gives you that super shallow depth of field, that very cinematic look. 
And so the 24 to 70 is your perfect all around lens. You can still get some shallow depth of field, but if you really wanna get that super shallow, the Nikkor 1.8s are amazing and they are super small. I really like these lenses. I'm a big fan of the 35 and the 50 and I used them for a ton of shooting on this film. I would not have been able to shoot this film and get all this footage that I was able to get if I had to pack this camera in my backpack. The only reason that I was able to capture some of these shots was that I had it on my hip and I was able to pull it out and grab the shots while I was climbing. Now there was moments where I would pause, but there was also moments where it was a little bit safer and I would pull it out and actually be shooting while we were walking. And I didn't have to stop everyone. And that's one thing when it comes to these climbs, if we were stopping, setting up shots, stopping, setting up shots the entire time, we probably would have never summited. Instead, we were able to move quick and keep at a steady pace because my camera was so accessible and there was only moments where I really had to stop and set up shots. A lot of it, especially on those climb days, was run and gun style of shooting. So I was just pulling it out documentary style, grabbing some shots, putting the camera back and moving forward. Let's talk about something that I found is a major strength when it comes to the Nikon Z6. So when I was out shooting, I couldn't always be in manual exposure because the conditions were constantly changing. I had gloves on. It was hard for me to sit there and judge exposure with sunglasses. One thing that happens when you're up climbing is you have these super dark sunglasses to kill all the reflection. So they're polarized, they're super dark, so it is hard to see screens. So what I would do just to keep things moving, keep things easy is rely on the auto exposure and also the auto focus. So I've dialed into the settings to find what works best for me, but in terms of exposure, the auto exposure is dead on like most of the time. I didn't really have any issues and I'm looking back at the footage now as I'm making the film and I've noticed that all the scenes that I shot where it was auto, I'm not having any issues in terms of messing with the exposure because it locked on in the auto mode. So I would do a mix. I would do some auto, some manual, but when I was on the mountain, majority of the time I would set it to auto and I would set it to auto focus as well because I'm not seeing the screen. So I could see it for framing purposes, but I have the auto focus adjustment on the joystick on the back. So I could shift my autofocus box around. I use a smaller box so that I can really isolate what I want, especially when I'm using these primes where it's a 1.8 and I really need to isolate a subject. So I would be able to use my glove and push the joystick around. And then if you click in the center, I set it up so that it just snaps right back to the center. So for me, that was super easy to make sure that the focus was always locked on to what I needed it to be locked on. So there's a nice little like hut they built on this campsite. They got some stoves or some chairs to hang out, but it's actually pretty quiet in here. It's windy outside, but it's quiet in here. And I'm gonna just record my voiceover for the film. And it's kind of got a nice sound to it. A lot of times I typically just use the microphone that's on top of my camera and I find a good spot and record my voiceovers that way. You could just use the things that you have and just you know record video, but you're actually recording the voiceover. So overall, working with the Nikon Z6 has been pretty awesome. And like I said, this film was some planning and some just shooting and seeing what I can get, especially on this last day of climbing. So our final day, we went for the summit of Mount Athabasca, started at 2 a.m., got up, got everything going, and started climbing through the dark. Now, there were some scenes here that I really wanted to capture. I wanted to capture when it's pitch black, we just have our headlamps on and we're just walking through the night because this is something a lot of people don't realize when you're climbing. When you're up on these mountains, you always have to start in the middle of the night because the conditions are the best on the mountain when it's frozen. So in the coldest part of the night is when you wanna be climbing. If you're climbing midday with the sun beating down on you, that's when avalanches happen, that's when crevasses open up. You just don't wanna put yourself in these situations if you don't have to. So I really wanna capture that footage at night where it's just us and our headlamps. And the low light on this camera is great. Full frame, shooting with a 1.8, I was able to really capture the scene. And right as the sun started to come up on the horizon, it was still super dark out. This camera was able to capture these scenes that I've never been able to capture before. Really cool looking footage as we're climbing through the night and you just have that little bit of sun coming up over the horizon. It was super cold outside, the coldest part of the night. It never once gave me an issue, and I was able to keep filming in all of these conditions. So on the final climb day, I kept the camera on my hip, on my climbing harness the entire day, and I kept switching between the 24 to 70 and the 50. On previous climbs, I'll bring action cameras, I'll bring 360 cameras, but having a full frame camera with these lenses gives you a completely different look and gives you that cinematic look to your film, 
and forcing myself to only shoot using the Nikon Z6. I think I was able to get such a cool looking film, something so different than I've ever been able to capture up on these mountains. And I'm super happy with all the footage that I've been able to get out of this camera. So guys, if you haven't checked out the climbing film yet, make sure you head over. I'm gonna put a link down in the description. I'm also gonna put it at the end of this video. I highly suggest you check out that video, especially after watching this, just seeing what you can create using the Nikon Z6 Filmmakers Kit. And if you want any more information about this entire Nikon Z6 kit, I'll put a link down below in the description so you guys can see all the pieces that come with it. But I'm super impressed with this camera. I had a ton of fun filming this project. And I just wanna thank Nikon for giving me the opportunity to shoot the film that I wanted to. Just let me go out there, play with cameras, and just shoot something that I've been wanting to shoot for a while. All right, guys, let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the project that I was able to create using the Nikon Z6. And let me know your thoughts about this behind the scenes. Did you like this video? Do you wanna see more behind the scenes videos from creating my films? And guys, that is it. Make sure you head over, check out the film, and I'll see you on the next one.